Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show you the details of how Knapsack based crypto system is actually constructed. All right, let's get started. Suppose we have um, Alice and Bob, uh, our friends, we can imagine as uh, two computers. Um, Bob wants to talk to Alice. So um, let, let me put Alice over here, right? And Bob over here. So we are talking about public key crypto system, which means Alice has to publish her public key. Um, maybe there is a public file where she will put her public key. This is a public file. Everybody in the world knows this is Alice and her corresponding private key, a public key, of course, not private key, uh, Alice and uh, public key, okay? So if somebody wants to talk to Alice, they go look into this, this public file and they take the public key from that particular uh, file. And then um, in this case, Bob wants to talk to Alice. Bob will encrypt the message using public key of Alice. Uh, Alice will decrypt using her private key, which she keeps it secret, of course, okay. This is the basic public key crypto system concept. Um, Bob will use the public key of Alice. Alice will use her private key to decrypt it. Now we are going to construct such a crypto system using knapsack based uh, idea, okay? We talked about knapsack problem in the last two segments. Um, when the sequence of numbers or the, uh, or the list of numbers, um, when the list is already sorted, then uh, it's an easy problem to figure out whether a uh, particular value can be written as a combination of the list elements. But if the list is not sorted, then it turned out to be a difficult problem to solve. It's an NP-complete problem. So their idea is to somehow um, make use of the NP-complete problem uh, and, uh, and to construct a crypto system uh, in such a way that it will be difficult for the attacker to break it. Okay, that's the intention. But uh, I wanted to also warn you that uh, there are some weaknesses detected in this crypto system. Um, so it's not recommended for actual use. Okay, nevertheless, it's a very interesting idea. That's the reason I'm discussing, okay. So what will Alice do as part of her public key? So as part of the public key, um, she has to uh, generate a sequence of uh, numbers like a uh, knapsack baits, right? Uh, but before generating public key, Alice will act actually have to generate a private key in this, in this uh, algorithm. So Alice will pick uh, say a bunch of private uh, numbers. I will use easy sequence E1, E2, um, EN, okay? So these are numbers, super increasing numbers, okay? We talked about super increasing, uh, meaning each element, for example, EN is greater than the sum of all the elements preceding it, meaning EN is greater than E1 plus E2 plus EN minus one, okay? That's basically the idea of a, super increasing set. Each element is greater than the sum of previous elements. So Alice generates first the super increasing sequence, which is private. So I wanted to put private here just to be clear. Nothing is public yet. This is private. Okay. Uh, what uh, they are going to do is, um, they're going to, um, well, let, let's get back to this. Uh, Alice key generates this uh, private sequence and she keeps it private. Nobody knows it. However, we do know that this is an increasing, super increasing sequence, okay? That's the important fact. But for the public key, some, some really interesting idea has been uh, used. Um, before generating the public key, we have to generate two more numbers, okay? The numbers are called W and uh, uh, let me denote the other number by capital N, okay? So all of these numbers, this is also private, okay? So I, I use PR to denote private. Okay, this is private, this is also private. Okay, just to be clear, nothing is public yet. Now I'll show you how the public key is constructed in this construction, okay? The public key is nothing but some transformation applied to uh, each of the elements of your super increasing sequence. So public key is basically T of uh, E1 I will define what the T is in a moment, but you can imagine T is basically transforming your private sequence into a public sequence, such a way that it's difficult to go back from a public to private, okay? So you take all of these E1, E2, EC sequence and transform it into not necessarily increasing sequence, okay? So now we have a list of numbers Okay, I'll define what T means in a moment, but imagine this is the public key for now. So what will Bob do to 
to encrypt an m bit uh, n bit number so th because we have n that means there are n components here right so suppose bob wants to send a message to to alice say the message m uh, made of uh, n bits okay m1 m2 right and so on mn suppose he wants to uh, he wants to send m bits to alice what will he do bob bob will actually select uh, values t of e1 t of e2 and so on and for example let's say um, uh, he wants to send uh, this bit to be turned on this is turned off and this is turned on okay so so what will uh, the cipher text uh, bob will have bob cipher text c will be uh, he he wants this to be one right that means turned on this to be zero and this to be one and the rest are all zero assume like that okay so he wants to send one zero 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 one so how will he do that all he will do is he will take this one which is the first bit right from the left position he will multiply it with the t of e1 that means uh, he will have the first bit t of e1 which is public right t of e1 is known to everybody and he will add it with t of uh, en because that's the other other bit that is turned on right so he's going to send this ciphertext c to alice okay so c is sent to alice of course eavesdropper e will also know uh, c because it's sent in clear channel uh, eavesdropper also knows the public key because it's public because it's publicly registered okay so basically this sequence is publicly registered here okay let me just connect the connect the dots so it's everybody knows this this public sequence okay so now the question is uh, how will alice be able to decrypt the message um, that uh, she got from bob it looks like a difficult problem to solve again because um, I, I started this whole series by saying knapsack is a difficult problem to solve but it seems that from c um, it will be difficult for her to figure out uh, which of the public key uh, values were picked by bob right it turned out that's where the trick is for this particular crypto system the the function t has some interesting idea uh, built in it's a trap door t is called the trap door um, let me explain the trap door now so how is t defined okay so t is defined as follows t of um, ei okay some weight i ith weight from your private sequence alice's private sequence is nothing but uh, w which is another private variable w times ei mod n that's basically the transformation that alice will have to do from her private key to public key okay so he, she is the one. She she was the one who generated e1 to en, right? So she will apply her trapdoor t, um, and computes t of e1 by w e1 mod n. T of e2 means w times e2 mod n, and so on. So see, this is the trapdoor. Okay, this t stands for trapdoor. There are some more properties that now I have to explain for this uh, decryption to work. For Alice to decrypt the message from Bob. Um, our W must be relatively prime to N. Okay, so GCD of um, W comma uh, N must be one. Otherwise, uh, Alice cannot decrypt the message coming from Bob. Okay, uh, I will show you why. And there is one more property: um, the number N must be um, greater than uh, E1 plus E2 plus uh, En. All the way to en that means we can imagine uh, we generate uh, a super increasing sequence of n plus one items right because this this you can imagine this n this capital n can be another element here that we generate and we just take that as a separate entity okay anyway so this 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 should be also clear in a moment why i have this this constraint okay anyway so let's now talk about the decryption process. Why would this work? Why would um, Alice, um, why could uh, Alice um, decrypt the message that she's receiving from Bob? Bob sends the ciphertext C, right? How can Alice decrypt it? So that, that's the first question. So let's think about how the message was encrypted by Bob. So Bob sends some number to, to, to Alice. C is a number, right? Which is sum of T1 through Tn, okay? 
multiplied with uh, M1 in the front. We can also rewrite this more precisely. We could say uh, what Bob sends is basically MITI, right? Remember, M is just a, a binary number, zero or one. So we could also view it like this for I equal to one through N because there are N bits. I'm going to assume there are N bits that uh, Bob wants to, to send to Alice. And I also assume the public key is made of n bits just to make it simple to get the idea across. And this is a small, this, this is small m to be more precise. This is small m, okay? This is the same as this, this m. Okay. So uh, basically Alice is receiving this uh, C, which is a linear combination of uh, the weights. Uh, some elements can be zero or one. That means you don't like that particular bit. Uh, you don't want to send that particular bit, essentially. That's the meaning. Suppose I, in this case, M1 will be one and the M1 will be, Mn will be one. Other than that, all of the others are zero. Okay, so now she's uh, going to receive this C from Bob. Why would we, why would this work uh, for Alice? All she has to do is uh, decrypt the C, right? But she can't decrypt it because it's made of a linear combination of a non-increasing sequence, not necessarily increasing sequence. Okay, that's a big problem. So how will she get back to from her trap door to the super increasing uh, problem? So the algorithm works as follows. Uh, let me uh, use this particular uh, the area to explain that. Okay, so le let's see. Um, how can we rewrite this C as follows, right? Let's let's rewrite the C as the ciphertext C as a linear combination of one, two M, M I, A I. I'm going to use the notation A I. What is A I? A I stands for T of E I, okay? That's basically what A I stands for. We can just write it here. A I is nothing but uh, T of uh, E I, trap door applied to E I. Okay, all right. But how did we get the trap door? We get the trap door by multiplying W times EI. So, which means we can rewrite this C as um, MI, right, times, okay, what is the meaning of uh, T of EI? Which means some multiple of uh, um, N plus WEI, that's the meaning, right? So we don't know some multiple of uh, N, some DI times N plus W times EI, right? That's the meaning of the AI. That's the definition of modulus, okay? Let me uh, explain this one more time more clearly. Uh, we, we, we denoted AI by TI. What is the meaning of TI? TI is something um, uh, basically congruent to WEI mod N. Uh, which means TI is nothing but some multiple of N plus WEI, that's the definition of modulus. Okay, I varies from one to N. And now we can rewrite this uh, more uh, easily. Um, if you pay close attention, um, we can, uh, if we apply mod N on both sides of this equation, um, what will we get? We get uh, um, C is congruent to um, sigma mi w ei um, mod n, right? And I, I can skip the mi dan because mod n will cancel out the dn um, by, because that's the idea of mod n, right? Mod n with the dan will be zero. Therefore, I'm left with this, this part. Now I can take the W inverse on both sides, which means um, I can rewrite this now as, as follows. Uh, C times W inverse is congruent to uh, MI EI in mod N, okay? I is varying from one through N, right? The N items. Okay, snapshot with 10 items, and our private sequence will start with a five bit number and then it will become a six bit, seven bit and so on. You will have a super increasing sequence. That's the basic idea of this uh, knapsack uh, construction. Okay, let me run it and show it to you. So I, I said I need 10 items, right? Uh, remember the capital N is the 11th item. So basically here, here is the private sequence. 
super increasing sequence and i will take the last element of the private sequence as the capital n um, and i need a w which is relatively prime to n and uh, the public key is basically computed by applying the transformation trapdoor transformation or trapdoor function that we talked about so alice will publish this public key to the world um, if bob wants to send this the secret message binary message also made of 10 bits uh, uh, bob will apply the encryption function basically apply uh, let me show you the encryption function very quickly how is the encryption function in this case um, the encryption function is extremely simple. Uh, you, if you wanted to encrypt one block, um, I'm going to only talk about only one block, right? Exactly assuming that the message length is the same as the public key length. Um, all we are doing is uh, just multiply the message block by public key block, which means we know exactly which bits are turned on or off um, during the encryption. And we send this number 133476. Okay, now let's talk about decryption. How will decryption work? Uh, decryption is also uh, simple. Um, all we have to do is remember, take the incoming ciphertext and multiply it with the W inverse, okay? Um, that's what the W inverse part is. So once that is done, uh, we solve the super increasing problem that we talked about in the previous segment uh, to find out uh, the decrypted message. As you can see, the decrypted message is basically coming from the decryption algorithm, which matches the message that was sent by uh, Bob to Alice. Okay, that's basically it. And uh, let me quickly show it to you some important aspects here. Um, the, um, this is the encryption algorithm, which encrypts one block at a time. A block means um, the, the number of bits of your public key must be the same as the block of the message. Okay, I, I made a simplified assumption that both are same to avoid padding and things like that. Okay, so um, the decryption I just talked about, and here is the construction of the demo. I generate a private sequence and I select the last element of the sequence as the capital N, the modulus. And uh, I also generate the uh, private weight W. And then I apply the um, trapdoor function. That's the, the generate public key function is basically applying the trapdoor. And then I uh, generate a random message to, to show to you this, this, this secret message is randomly picked. And uh, we encrypt the, the message bits using the public key and send the ciphertext to, to the receiver, in this case, Alice. Alice will decrypt it using the um, private key W and, and her private sequence. That's all. So that's basically how it works. And I also wanted to warn you, there are some uh, attacks on uh, knapsack based systems. Uh, therefore, I would uh, uh, encourage you not to use this in, in production. Uh, but uh, this is nevertheless a very interesting idea invented back in 1978. Thank you very much.